Hi there, it's Nicole for Simon Says Stamp with a card for the Encouraging Words blog hop at Simon Says Stamp. This is all new products from the Encouraging Words release. This is a really fun release with new stamps, dies, stencils, sequins, and some watercolor prints, just some really fun things. I'm going to be creating this metallic stamped background here with a couple of fun greetings on top and then some bee accents. This is the new Kaleidoscope background 6x6 six six size background stamp that I've stamped on some Lawn Fawn Narwhal cardstock and I'm sprinkling with some silver embossing powder and I sort of made a mess with my embossing powder here so I'm going to kind of try to scoop it all together when I'm done and funnel it back into my container. Um, I don't know what happened here. <laughs> I'd usually try not to make such a mess with my embossing powder because I don't like the feel of it on my work surface or anything like that. If you have trouble picking up those little fibers, I suggest um, the Swiffer dry cloths. They will kind of attract that embossing powder to it and they make it so much easier to clean up. I just used this paper towel just to kind of scoop it all together because I didn't want it to stick to it too bad like it would a, a Swiffer cloth and then funneled it back into my container. Once I have embossed the background with the silver embossing powder, I am going to grab some watercolor uh, watercolors in silver, white, and black. And this is kind of a different color combination. Um, I tried a couple of different things before I settled on this. I tried stamping this image on white cardstock and coloring in with shades of yellow because I knew what greetings I wanted to use. I knew what images I wanted to use, those bees, and my first thought was yellow and it just wasn't working at all. I did not like anything I tried, and I tried about three different things. I tried Distress Oxide inks over the image, I tried the Zig Clean Color in a couple different color combinations, and I just, it wasn't working. I decided to try stamping and embossing on the dark cardstock and then coloring in with my watercolors over the dark cardstock, which, is something that I've done quite a bit. It is one of my very favorite techniques. When you first start, it seems maybe a tiny bit intimidating simply because there's such a big surface area to color in. And if you're coloring in each of those little individual uh, areas like these really detailed backgrounds, it can take a little bit of time. It probably took me I'm going to guess just from the timer, I turned off my video camera a little bit. It probably took me 40 minutes to color it, but I got just had interruptions. There were distractions, kids home for the summer, so I don't have uninterrupted work time. And so it probably took a little less time if you just sit down and flat color. I find this one of those projects that's super relaxing. I love coloring in the images with whatever coloring medium it might be. Even if this was stamped with black ink on white cardstock and simply colored in with Copics or Zigs or colored pencils, whatever you have, it is really fun to do and it creates such amazing results. I really love it. At this point of coloring, you can tell it doesn't look like much. What I'm doing is going in and coloring a whole bunch of areas going around here with some silver color. And this is not really going to change the color so much of the background narwhal cardstock, but give it a nice silver shimmer, which is going to be a lot easier to see when the paint dries and when the background is completely colored in. So that's kind of the area that's going to maintain that gray color. The other two colors are more opaque. The white and the black are really going to show up. You can definitely see the difference here between the white and the silver. Now, when I first started, I picked a couple of areas to color in to see, kind of get, get my bearings, see how I wanted to color them. And then from there, what I really want to do, even though I kind of quit with the silver, from here, I went on to color as much of the white as I could. 
There may be a few little places you miss that you have to go back later and fill in. But for the most part here, I am gonna stick to the white and color this in with my white ink, all the areas that I've chosen to be white. And then I'm going to move on to black and I'm gonna come back to the silver and fill everything else in. A lot of times when I do this, I kind of work with, from one corner or one area out and just keep changing the color. I didn't wanna keep changing and trying to get my water brush pen completely clean from the black ink. It makes it really hard to get that clean. You're gonna to have to squeeze quite a bit of water out or really flush the brush you're using because of the black and you don't want it to cross contaminate because you're gonna lose that awesome detail. So I chose to instead try to color in as much of the white areas as possible. I really love how the white looks on this. If the white happens to get too watered down and it's too faint and light, which in a few places I really felt that it was after it dried, I went back over them again with a little bit less watered down paint and that's going to make a huge difference. So at this point, I think you kind of maybe hopefully get an idea of how I was coloring this. I'm gonna to switch to black. I guess I did switch just a little bit here. Um, I colored in a few places and then I realized right away I needed to do it the other way that I was just talking about. Here I am simply finishing up some little areas of silver. So you can see what a drastic difference it is from where I was to where I'm at now. And I'm in love with this background. I think it's so cool. Even though I'm doing kind of a more fun, whimsical style card, this background works for that. It would work for a more elegant design. Maybe you need a wedding card, an anniversary card, um, a sympathy card. Depending on what you put on top of it, you could do so many different things. You could change up the colors you put on top of it. I just really think it's fun. And that silver, you can see, gives it that awesome metallic finish. Now this is me just filling in some areas where I realized I forgot to put some white. Um, so I'm going in and just quickly laying down that color. I love the Simon Says Stamp water brush pen for this. There's water in, you can put water in the brush itself. And I think it's a lot easier than trying to dip my paintbrush into water. But if you want maybe a little more control over the flow of water, you can always use a fine tip paintbrush and dip it into water that way. Now this paint dries really quickly, but I will set this aside to completely air dry while I work on the rest of the card design. Even if there's a few more places I need to fix, I thought there were some places where the black maybe wasn't quite as opaque as I wanted it to be. It was a little too translucent, so I went over those areas as well. You can always go back and kind of go over anything that you feel like needs a little bit more paint. I like to use a paper towel to squeeze out the water and clean my paintbrush. For the main part of the greeting, I die cut the Kindness Matters greeting from Narwhal cardstock and Black Licorice cardstock. And I'm gonna set that aside just for a second while I stamp the rest of my sentiment, You're the Bee's Knees from the Animal or Encouraging Animals stamp set. And I'm going to sprinkle on some white embossing powder on that greeting. This is the Altenew embossing powder. Heat set that embossing powder and then cut this into a thin strip. This is gonna fit right underneath the die cut greeting. Gathering all of the components and elements here for my card design. So there's my little sentiment strip. For the kindness matters, I'm gonna create an inlay. And one of my favorite ways to do an inlay is to place some foam adhesive on the back of the panel that's gonna be the inlay. In this case, it's the Kindness Matters greeting. And I'm using the Scotch foam adhesive, but I want it to be right up next to each other perfectly. 
And from there, I'm gonna flip it over and it's gonna have adhesive already. So there's no additional adhesive needed, which is fantastic. And I have both the gray letters that I've popped out, plus I have die cut this again from black cardstock, and I'm gonna start replacing the letters and they're gonna stick right in there. Super fast way to create an inlay style. On any letters like the D, the R, or the A that has a little inside piece, I have kept those gray letters so that I can fill those in. You could even do two greetings from the components you have here so that there's no waste and go ahead and create two cards. The other card will have a black outline with gray letters. So I'm gonna save those pieces for another card at some other time. But this is a quick way to create an inlay and really easy. The foam adhesive is not super thick. So even though it's gonna give it some nice subtle dimension, it's not going to stick up so high that it's going to be hard to put through the mail. So there are my last couple of letters. And then the last thing I'm going to need for my card are some little bumblebees from the Encouraging Animals stamp set. There are so many cute critters in this stamp set. I'm gonna use the little bumblebee here. Um, it was kind of the inspiration for the whole card. I thought that the greeting, you're the bee's knees, and the little bumblebee were super cute. And I did a kind of black, white, silver theme or black, white, gray theme to go with it so that the bumblebees really pop off the background. I trimmed down the greeting strip just a little bit and my paper is rolling up just a bit because I've used water. I am gonna stamp those bees on some Bristol Smooth cardstock so that I can use Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers to color them in. What I love about the Zigs on Bristol Smooth cardstock is that they, and I, Messed up my little bumblebee there the first time, so I'm gonna go ahead and stamp that a couple more times. They blend beautifully on Bristol Smooth cardstock. There isn't any, they just glide on, and it's so fun to do. I just, it's get these fantastic results. This is very minimal coloring. I've got two shades of yellow and one shade of very, very light gray for the wings that I'll blend out with the Wink of Stella clear glitter brush pen so that the wings not only have maybe just a tiny slight gray tint to them, but they're glittery. And the water, the glitter pen is water-based just like the zigs are, so they're going to work together. I'm even going to take the water brush pen and go over the black letters in the die cut greeting to give them a tiny bit of glitter. It's going to be a very subtle glitter. You could maybe even go over them with glossy accents if you wanted to, to really make them stand out. So once that's done, I am going to color in my remaining two bumblebees. Again, the bright yellow and yellow. I like to lay down the dark color first, blend out with the lighter color. If it blends too much, you can always go back over it again with the darker color. Some light gray for the wings, and I'll show you that wink of Stella now blending that out, smoothing out any harsh lines, adding a little touch of glitter to those images. Go ahead and die cut these with the coordinating dies. And then I am ready to put this whole thing together. Just so cute. I love the little eyes on all of the critters. This is a really fun sized bumblebee too. For the eyes, I like to take a black glaze pen and add detail to the pupils to really make them pop. I've put a little adhesive, some score tape on the back of my greeting strip that I'm going to attach right there below the dimensional die cut greeting. I have some foam adhesive on the back of the bumblebees to attach those to the card. Because the dimensional greeting is adhered with foam tape. 
it makes it easier to attach the bumblebees, any of them that are gonna be kind of overlapping the greeting with foam tape as well. And it helps them pop off of that background. Even though the background is fairly subtle, there is a pattern to it. And that little bit of dimension just helps those images really pop off of the background. For some little bumblebee trails, black is really going to blend into the background and it's not gonna show up at all. So I decided to go with some dandelion yellow Nouveau crystal drops and I'm going to um, draw some little drops coming out from each of these and my bottle was slightly clogged and this is the first time that's ever happened to me. So I unclogged it but I needed to make sure that it wasn't going to explode all over my project. I did have that happen once and it was super discouraging and I was so upset with myself for um, squeezing the bottle so hard that it exploded all over everything, including my shirt and it completely ruined it. So just a little FYI, don't do that. If your bottle's clogged, take a pin and unclog it. Don't just keep squeezing it because the top will come off of these and your product will go everywhere. Once those drops are completely dry, I'm going to place that on a card. I've used the envelope sentiments to decorate and Simon Says Stamp card or envelope to coordinate with this. Some Nouveau crystal drops are going to dry completely clear and it gives some nice glossy shine to the bumblebee wings. And my card is all finished. Thanks for joining me today for this Kindness Matters card featuring components from the recent Encouraging Words release from Simon Says Stamp. The supplies I've used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos featuring Simon Says Stamp's dyes and stencils that you might be interested in. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.